I don't know what it was. He's walking upright like a man. Sightings in and around Vermont. Bigfoot sightings across New England have been reported. Red glowing eyes, about seven feet tall. Red eyes, big old fangs, claws coming out through, three inches long, you know, just sharp as they could be. There has been another UFO sighting flying over the Royal Botanic Gardens. There are 500 UFO sightings in the world every month. The truth is out there. Oh, jeez. Yeah, I'm done with the week. Are you done with the week? I'm done Was with it the that week. kind of week? I had, a, I, had a, a de- I had a very busy week, but a good week. Uh, my week wasn't that, it wasn't that bad. It was just a week. Okay. Yeah. The, uh, I'm, I'm now no, I'm now changed over my, to my new role. Oh, nice. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That only took four months or however long it took. Yeah. A little longer than you think it should. Yeah. But whatever. No, I just. I'm behind. I I started behind. Yeah. So. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, It's just been a very busy week at work. <clears throat> but a very nice day the other day where um mm. had a half day and then we went over to uh Mohonk and realized that um we're old man yeah and uh so went to do the the lemon squeeze right you ever do that before mm-hmm. yeah I've, d- I've done the Brandon I've yeah. done the lemon squeeze so there's like we one didn't have any reservations so we had to h- hike 2 miles to the cliff face before we could do that and Mm -hmm. then and i had my backpack with all the gear and stuff in it oh so you didn't even you didn't even like pull up and be like hey can we get a day pass no so the day pass doesn't you can't park at the mountain house you really park two miles away i didn't know that yeah the mountain house is only for guests and people with reservations for like dinner and stuff like that Oh, I'm yeah. now beginning to realize that my family literally always said we knew someone up there. Yeah. Because we might have known someone up there. <laughs> That's fair. And uh, as it turns out, because I think I did that one as little, the Lemon Squeeze uh-huh. is this, this sketchy crawl through, like, it's at a fancy place. There's some, like, they put down, like, little wooden planks and shit you can cross, but you can also, like, just slide and fall 30 feet in a few spots. Um, mm-hmm. And... So I realized how out of shape I, my back still hurts. I didn't know you could I had these muscles in my back, but I do cuz I I pulled them. Um but so it was fun. It was exciting cuz like you, you go through the crevice in the end like this cave and then I'd have mm-hmm. my like she'd go through first, throw the backpack over, then I try to get my tall ass through and, and barely fit in some spots. And uh it was going well. Definitely kicked our asses and then after about the first oh I'm going to say 30 minutes of the sweat and went through all the bottles of water and mm-hmm. uh, eventually just looked at each other and was like, do you just want to go get sushi and wine? And <laughs> was like, yes, yes, that's a good idea. <laughs> just just scooped. We just uh, like it, like 10 minutes beforehand, we're already looking at spots. We're like, how do we how do we just get out of here? This is so difficult. <laughs> like. Oh no no! It it'll kick your ass. If yeah. You're not careful. Oh yeah. Oh, and it did. It was fun. Like it, yeah. I don't like. I'm very happy we did that, but it definitely kicked hard ass. Yeah, I, it's a nice it's a nice hike. It's got good views and man, what is going? The hike is it's nice. Got some, I was also yeah. scared in some spots. So the lemon squeeze, by the way, all the rocks have been worn smooth. Yes. From people touching them, which I so like their response where it was very much a controlled sliding down where like if you're a foot to your left you're good if you're a foot to your right you like fall and break stuff mm-hmm. um and also we were probably pushing a little bit too hard um because we passed three groups of people yeah you might have been pushing too hard because that how long did it take you to reach the red lemon squeeze from the mountain house um from the m- like to walk there a while because the ro- we, we passed it because we didn't read the maps <laughs> Oh, because there's a rock scramble. Oh, no, we did all that. So we did all of them yeah. in order, except I think like okay. the last one. Because there's the okay. squeeze, the scramble, uh, things like Old Man's Craig. Um, yep. So I did like all of that stuff. Because I didn't realize you could just pop in at any one. So we basically I didn't know that either. started at the beginning and then just went hard. 
um, and didn't realize he could bounce and, like, get out at any of them until we, like, I was like, I'm just going to see if we, if I can climb down this and then get to that trail that's over there. And I climbed down it, and mm-hmm. then, like, 10 feet over was, like, the red spray paint that was like, here's the safe way to come down. And then while walking back to the entrance of, uh, like, the squeeze and the scramble and all that, every once mm-hmm. in a while I'd see some more red paint going up the cliff face, and I was like, oh, so... Probably at several points we could have just left already. Probably, but uh, it was probably it was fun. It was pretty, but holy crap! Yeah, I think you can see like three states from there. I think you can see uh, at least Connecticut. It's possible. From there. And I get so you know how I sweat. I got so sweaty, and then we were like, one, we're not hiking another mile or whatever through the woods to get back mm-hmm. to the car. So it was just two sweaty people shirts off like walking down that paved like windy paved road when you're trying to get out Mm -hmm. of the house and then uh, there were several signs that were like hikers don't go here take the trail and all that stuff and because then i forgot because we go there every year um i do with my family at least for uh, in the winter yeah yeah. where you go in the winter yeah yeah for like christmas times and um, oh got it got it it took like there's the whole like it's a mountain so there's like if there's a paved road, no shoulder anywhere, and cars flying past, and uh, yeah. we're like, man, this is getting a little bit sketchy. And eventually, someone that worked there, and I didn't realize they worked there till after I was already in their car, uh, like a truck pulls up, and they're just like, hey, do you, you should just take this ride, because it's going to get freaking nuts. They're like, you've got another 40-minute walk before you get to where you want to go, and that's only if you don't have to dive off the road for cars. Yeah. <laughs> So he just got, yeah. later it turned out it was a guy that worked there for like 30 years, but super nice gentleman. Let, let, like, just let two very sweaty individuals just get in his truck and be like, sorry, we're sweating through all your stuff. But, uh, oh, it was fun. They, the people who work at the mountain house don't really care because the people who work at the mountain house are outdoorsy types a lot of the time. Yeah. Not, they're not like the people who visit the mountain house. No. Surprisingly, like I passed a tour on the way there with the head of the tour guide. I was like, "These guys." Yeah, yeah. It, it's a lot of it's a lot of uh, out of towners who go to the mountain yeah. house. Definitely going to go back some probably pretty soon, but but with yeah. reservations. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. <laughs> because one, if you want to do stuff, why hike a mile and one point two miles to the house and then farther to if you're going all the other places. Why hike a mile before you want to go do the stuff where you're going to end up hiking a few miles anyway? Yeah, that's that's fair. Yeah. Um, so not as exciting. Okay. But yes. I have a question for you that is going to make this show even more mar- more localized. Oh, yes. Because, because we're already pretty localized talking about Mohonk, but people know about Mohonk Mountain. Yeah. It's a thing. It's right? a thing. Um, is Kai's closed for good? Oh, you know, I don't know. And I drove past literally two days ago and I was like, huh, I wonder what's going on over there. Cause I hope I, not. I, I like Kai's. I, I do too. I've driven past it. I've driven past it twice now and it's been closed on Friday. Yeah. They might just be open less or closed on Fridays for a weird reason. Yeah, cause cause I was gonna get some, and I wanted some of them those those succulent dumplings. Yeah, uh, and I'd call them up, and I'd get like just an endless dial tone. Yeah, not even a dial tone, just a yeah forever, which it, it already exceeded the number that I thought was even possible for a phone to ring before yeah. it supposedly you know, disconnects. They're open now, according to Google, but well, Google, Google doesn't lies. Know. Google doesn't know shit. Yeah. Um. But I was like really honestly disappointed. Okay. So I I was just figured I'd ask you because you might know. I but... don't know. So to be completely honest, the Chinese food I've been getting recently is adjacent to a dive bar, and it's very frequently uh... like you'll uh, like uh, someone me or someone else will be in there, or like even the the bartender will just be like I kind of want egg rolls right now, and then it'll mm-hmm. just be everybody throws a little bit of money in and somebody walks next door and just gets a bunch of egg rolls. Yeah, well that's that's dive bar Chinese food. Yeah. That's what you're talking about. 
but yeah. It's the one, let's get super local, the one right next to Dallas. God. Yeah. Dallas Hot Wieners? Oh, yeah. I was in a Which, weird mood the other day, and it's like, I want to be healthy, but I also don't, so I got a salad, and then I drove to Dallas and got three Dallas Hot Wieners, uh, and ate a salad and hot dogs in bed. The, the da- that's While that's watching sci-fi movies. Something. Yeah. That's peak something. I don't know what that something is. Like, I was just in a weird food mood. Like, there was no reason for it at all. I- I will say, I will do some horrible things to get Dallas Hot Wieners. It's, I'm lucky to have them so close. They're honestly the best, The their sauce is the best sauce that I've ever had. You can just buy containers of the sauce. Just I so know you, know. you can. Okay. I know you can. But it's not the same if you don't have some dude just like put on the, the plastic gloves and just slather it oh, on yeah. hot dogs in front of you. That's a part of yeah. the experience. There's still Brandon. some of the same people there <clears throat> from when I was would go there when I was like, oh geez, oh, like fourteen, like the yeah. like people, the people who have been there have been there for a minute. It's it's an institution. Oh yeah, that's all it is. Yeah, it's definitely an institution. But um, I think we've I think we've talked long enough. Yeah, no, yeah. that's yeah, yeah, yeah. We're both yeah. we're both I, I looking think- at the timer in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I pay attention. Yeah. Um. So, welcome to Cryptopedia. Uh, ten minutes in, I don't have a name for this episode. Um. We do, we do myths, we do cryptids, we do all that that sort of stuff. Brandon has one that's that's ripped from the website. So, uh, it's something about the exploration of myths and legends that haunt the human mind. Something along those lines. S- some, something like that. Yeah. Something yeah, that's yeah. literally the thing I copy and pasted that you wrote on the website and then just tweaked a hair. Yeah, that thing um, that I always forget to write down. But regardless, uh, I, I'm uh, I'm John. I'm Brandon, and uh, we we do stuff. Yeah, we do we do <laughs> things we do things. Yeah, you think at fifty episodes I'd be much better at this, but I'm not. <laughs> um, if anything, I'm willfully willingly obstinate. Mm-hmm. Uh, so let's, uh, let's dive back in. So if you are listening to this episode and you haven't listened to spring Heel Jack part one, uh, you're going to be lost because this is spring Heel Jack part two. Yeah. Go eat dookie. Well, no, no. We don't I, even I like prefer- you anymore. No, no, Brandon. Stop listening no. completely. Brandon, I, our numbers... Our numbers are pretty good now, and I don't want them to go lower, if at all possible. Yeet! All right. Well, that's that's a thing you just did. Yeah. I don't um, know what it's from, but it's on Instagram video once, and I thought, I, I want to yell that. Yeet? Just scream yeet at someone? Yeah. Does that have a meaning? I'm going to Google it now. Uh, there's an original Vine. Oh, It's, it's just ex- a dude in... Okay. <clears throat> it's a kid in, like, khaki pants... Dancing. Yeah. Uh, let's see. What? You just yoded on them. I, I don't know. Yoded, what, yoded is the past tense of yeet? Apparently. Oh, good. Um, yeah, it's... That's, that's something I know now that's going to replace knowledge that I should probably have had otherwise. Yeah, that, that sucks. Okay, well. Thanks... Thanks, Internet. Uh, so before I get in to it, uh, I want to do a little bit of a... I want to touch on sources again, like I did last week. Um, once again, the majority of the, my information will be coming from Mike Dash's 40 and Studies research article, spring Jack to Victorian Boogagoo from Southern Ghost. I did way better pronouncing it that time. Still not right, but better. Yeah. Uh, the article is available in the show notes. Um... And if you find this interesting, I recommend reading the entire article because I'm, I literally just used it for the factual bits. He does some analysis on Spring Heel Jack towards the end of it, and it's super worth your time to read it if you're interested in Spring Heel Jack. Because he's literally the authority on Jack. Um, But let's, uh, let's pick up from the, the end of his flap, his original 1940 flap. Okay. Um, so 
basically for three decades he like makes these like limited appearances throughout the British countryside. Yeah. Um no like no more giant mass hysterias happen for a while. Um and for the most part he's just kind of like ho ho, I'm here. Ho ho, I'm here. Um although then you can also argue well, I'll get into that later, but there, there's some circumstances to it that I have a hypothesis for why he's hopping around the countryside, but that's that's, yes. that's for later. Um, so, his next canonical appearance, however, isn't until 1872 in Peckham. Um, the following descriptions of events in Peckham is reproduced from Mike Dash's research, which itself was pulled from Illustrated Police News, December 28th, 1872. Which, uh, I'm going to talk about Illustrated Police News a little bit more later, yeah. too. And we'll get into that as well. Uh, he appeared on for the 14th of October, 1872, to Sarah Ann Foster, a girl living opposite the Crystal Palace Tavern. And charring at Mr. Smith's... I, I don't know what charring means. I should probably have looked that up. Uh, in Lordship <laughs> Lane... It appears that she had been to fetch the summer the supper beer, and on her return, she was required to go another on another errand, which she complained to her mistress that there was yeah. a tall man waiting in the road. I really love eighteen hundreds newspaper article writing. It's not at all hard to read. Oh no, it's uh, it's the best. They should make mm-hmm. it assigned reading for children. Yes. Well they should because I want oh, I want Talk about assigned reading in person. There's the do you remember when you could read books during the summer as a kid and, uh, mm-hmm. like, go to Pizza Hut and, like, get a stickers put on a car to get free pizzas? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I just remember that. Yeah, it was, like, called Book It or something like that? Yeah. Uh, I want to look that up. Pizza Hut. Pizza Hut. I think you had, like, a... Oh, it's still in existence. Oh, shoot. Okay. Yeah, I there was like a yeah, it was a it was a pin that had stickers that you put onto it. Yeah. I never actually finished it, but that was mainly because I was lazy and I didn't feel like telling people what, what books I read. Yeah. Um cuz I definitely read enough books to <laughs> Oh, do you, yo, I read all the bu- I that program works cuz I read so much just for the pizza that it's not funny at all. Like so many just for the pizza. I mean, you then are associating reading with food rewards, so... Yes, and it's perfect. <laughs> All right, I'm not going to... I'm not going to argue with your de- your decision for it to be perfect. I mean, I will say it does help... Li- it is a literacy program, which is important, so... Yeah. But oh, I kind of want a personal pan pizza now. Oh, yeah. Oh, this is dangerous. All right, Um, getting back to the article... Mrs. Smith remonstrated her. Bleh. Okay, let me let me let me start that one over again. Mrs. Smith remonstrated with her on the folly of being frightened, and Mr. Smith said that he would watch her from the window. She started on her errand, but had not left the front garden when a figure in white rose from behind the fence. Well, yeah. when a figure in white rose from behind the fence. Yeah, I uh, I read good. Oh, you read I so good? We're, we're so good at reading. We're, yeah, I didn't... I, I read too many books for the Book It program. Yeah. Uh, she screamed loudly and rushed towards the doorway and was clasped in the arms of her master. He, having seen the apparition from the window and in rushing out, caught his foot on something, which threw him forward, and instead of catching the ghost, he caught the girl in his arms, who, oh. thinking it was the unearthly spirit that had gotten hold of her, went into a fit. <laughs> <laughs> Appropriate. Yes, in which she remained two hours and is now seriously ill. Yeah. <laughs> Could you imagine? I mean, well, that's what the article says, but you know what I think it probably was? Yeah. yeah. She she got upset because her her uh, the person in charge of the, the tavern, she just didn't like him. Yeah. Uh, the description given by Mr. Smith and the girl is as follows. About mm. six foot high... Dressed in a long overcoat, having white lining, which, when thrown open, was aided by a white waistcoat and outstretched arms to give the desired effect. What, yeah. Uh, what does this mean? Give the desired effect? That's such a weird thing to have in an article. Yeah. Is that I, added I, I, from... No. 
No. Oh, okay. No, that was in the original article. Uh, a dark felt hat and a plume of black feathers, which he had, which hides his ignominious features. Um. So reading that story, there's fairly little to tie this iteration of Jack from the original flap, uh, the overall coat and height notwithstanding, because that's pretty much standard ghost stuff. Uh, so it, it's kind of weird that this is associated with Jack, but after I started reading up on police news. Police news kind of had a thing with Spring Heel Jack. Yeah. So I'm beginning. I, I think that it's less, less that it was Jack and more that it was police news. But yeah. Um, other stories from the time describe an entity with a flaming face in which in some cases was able to leap a six foot tall fence. The Spring Heel Jack of old actually takes about three weeks into the sighting before he's realized in the manner close to his original appearance as described by the editor of the Camberwell in the Peckham Times. Mm. Um, while, while returning from his friend's house at Brixton Hill last evening, via Hemhead Hall, I was accosted by that malpropor fellow, the ghost. I had just arrived at the point in Herm Hill Road, where the footpaths runs from the sides of St. Paul's into Houth Moon Lane. When the figure came forth from behind the still, I confess I was momentarily frightened. But speedily recovering my presence of mind was on the point of making an onslaught with my umbrella when the object turned sharp round and clearing the low railings of a bound at a bound made off across the country. Being now over 40, <laughs> it was useless in thinking of pursuit. <laughs> oh, for me, yeah. For me, that would be be now over 20. Yeah. Oh, yeah. A hundred percent. I do appreciate this guy's candor. Yeah. No, it's, like, it's good. You have to you have to respect it because he's like, listen, I'm I'm too old for this shit. Yeah. That's literally what he's saying. I say <laughs> that polite... now. Yes. <clears throat> yes. He's saying that in polite Victorian English. Yeah. Uh, but I, however, satisfied myself that he is clad in black suit, which by some means he transposed into white when needful. So I guess he's saying that it was a black suit that he turned white. Yeah. So I guess he's kind of like a uh, runway model and he's just like pulling straps and they <laughs> white suit. Um, yeah. He also has spring heeled or India rubber sole boots for no man living could leap so lightly. <laughs> and I might say fly across the ground in the manner he did last night. Yeah. So at this point, spring heel Jack has returned in all but name. Also, it looks like the run faster and jump higher advertising campaign was started mm. way sooner than I had oh, ever yeah. anticipated. Yeah. Like Eat way it, sooner. Nike. We don't need them pumps. No. Well, hmm. I mean, we may need those pumps. We might actually need those pumps. We might need those pumps. Yeah. I never actually had pumps. No, they were so much fun. Didn't do anything, but so much fun. I was watching some sci-fi movies last night, and I forget which one it was. Well, and also thriller movies. Last night was sort of like a stay in and eat. Wait, I got a, We got a giant bag of Applebee's and just a Applebee's in bed watching TV. Oh, uh, I... You know, I'm not going to lie. Applebee's take out to go. So good. Like, Applebee's is not the greatest food in the world. No. But Applebee's to go might be a revolution. Oh, yeah. So at some point in time, someone in one of the movies was wearing the same Nikes that I have. And I was like, oh, those are my shoes. But also Applebee's to go is very interesting because one, just yes, it's always a good idea. You can just have like steak and shrimp and chicken wings and onion rings and like wonton tacos in bed and watch sci-fi movies why wouldn't you do that um uh, yeah. but at the same time pickup is at the bar and uh the applebee's bar is very sad it's a very sad place well yes if if someone's drinking at the applebee's bar whether they're, it's they're in a alone or as a couple they're not in a they're good in, spot. They're in a weird spot. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. It's a weird place to be. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, I want to go to a place where I'm just surrounded by weird stuff that was pulled from a junkyard and drink. That yeah. sounds good. 
This sounds oh, like there's a fun a... bar, but not if it's located in the middle of Applebee's. Yeah. <laughs> oh, hey, look over there. There's a family with a child. Yeah. All right. Well, let me let me get some uh, Jack Daniels and uh, and vodka somehow. I don't yeah. know. It's a weird combination, but you know. Yeah. I don't drink. Um. Yeah. I I, I remember the one time that we went to Applebee's with Nick Dondero and someone else that yeah. we had never met before but nick knew mm-hmm. um it was a weird experience yes i know what you're talking about a, yeah i don't really understand what happened there i got talked into doing a lot of stuff with nick <laughs> yeah yeah that's all i'm gonna say <laughs> yeah um so because of this this India is so rubber thing. Mm-hmm. I've kind of come up with a new theory for the existence of Springfield Jack. Yeah. He is a time traveling advertising campaign uh-huh. for a new brand of Nike sneakers. Oh. Jacks. And it will make sense in the year 2525. Yeah. Uh-huh. Assuming our timeline gets that far. But that's a whole nother thing. Uh-huh. Um, I'd invest in that. In jacks, yeah. I mean, it's a shoe. Yeah, it's I like a shoes. shoe that makes. Sh- That's fair. I remember the first time I ever saw people lined up to buy shoes. Uh huh. It was kind of a surreal experience for me. It was in New yeah. York City, and I was just like, "Why are people lined up to get shoes?" Because from my experience, I have never. There's only been one limited edition shoe I cared about. Yeah. Ever, actually, two. There were two limited edition shoes I ever cared about. The first uh, had a Bionicle Crata in the heel. Yeah. Uh, it was a Shadow Crata. No, that wasn't the Shadow Crata. That was the... Uh-huh. Uh, what, what Crata was that? Bionicle Crata shoe. Um, it might have been the, the Shadow Crata. Mm. It was cool because the shoe was a rock she. Yeah. Which is the villain from the the Mask of Light movie. And you could replace the you could replace the plastic bits on the shoe with yeah. other plastic bits. Oh. Uh so you could make your shoe look like a different rock she, which was awesome. Yeah. Uh, but it was also sold out everywhere and my foot was too big for it. Yeah. Because they didn't make them in adult sizes. I wonder why. Mm. Uh, but the other shoe that I cared about, and I never stood a chance of getting ever, was a Soundwave like Nike yeah. basketball sneaker, and those those things sold out in like mere seconds. Yeah, which I wasn't. Su- I shouldn't be surprised about, but mm. I I was at the time. Yeah. But um, yeah. All right. So, according to reports at the time, this ghost, as the local paper never referred to him as anything but, was captured after Joseph Monday had attempted to scare Matilda I- Matilda Ayers with a cloak lined in black and booing at her. Uh huh. The quote Boo. she gave, yes, Boo. almost definitely, because the quote that she- yeah. The quote that she gave was literally made a queer booing with his mouth. Yeah. Um, I personally think that Joseph Monday was the fall guy to curtail a mass hysteria in direct opposition to the first episode where they literally made it worse. Yeah. Um, because he was caught running down the street and was not particularly tall. Also, additional sightings of the ghost had occurred when he was in jail for a whopping six months. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> soon after his arrest, the matter would settle and no further reports were mm. made in the town. A similar f- flap emerged in Sheffield with a majority of reports describing a standard ghost that was conflated with spring Jack lore. Okay. So there's a lot of stories in the spring Jack story yeah. that are literally just... Hey, it's a ghost. Mm-hmm. Hey, it's Spring Hill Jack. Oh, da 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 da. da. You know, it, it's it's a lot of like people saying something is something that isn't something that isn't really Spring Hill Jack. They're just saying, oh yeah, this is definitely Spring Hill Jack. 
yeah. to like literally everything. Yeah. Um. So that brings us to 1877 in the Spring Hill Jack timeline. Um, a particularly noteworthy flat began in March of 1877 at the British military camp of Aldershot, uh, when a ghostly figure began to terrorize the camp. And now, I've got some some pictures from newspapers at the time. And they're fantastic. We've got, he- uh... Oh, wow. I, lo- I like what he's doing to the chair. Okay, so we have, I'll say, um, Gene Simmons on meth, doing mm-hmm. a fun dance to a man in a top hat. Then he throws the fun man in a top hat down a chimney, and now there's horses. Yes, that's pretty much it. And actually, yeah. if you look at the one in the the bottom, uh, Spring Hill Jack is like flying. At oh, the top of the... that's great, though. He's got like a Superman pose going yeah. on. Uh, it's also worth noting that he's basically naked in all these. It's a naked yeah. man. It oh, is a naked a man. A hundred percent. Yeah. I like the so, left, the top left picture because he he's getting grabbed. He's also grabbing. Oh yeah. You notice, but the, man uh, in the, the top right hat arm. is less scared than you think he is. Look at his yeah. left hand. Oh no, he's in. He's into it. The guy yeah. behind him is more scared because he's trying to pull yeah. the girl away. Uh, so a number. So all these these images, which are in the uh, episode copy, yeah, uh, for Patreon members. Um, all these images come from Illustrated Police News. Now, I said I would talk about Illustrated Police News. This is where I talk about it. Yeah. A number of reports emerged in Illustrated Police News in regards to this flap of sightings. If you're like me, you might not have known about this particular publication. Mm-hmm. However, it's kind of an infamous publication in in Britain. Yeah. Uh, or at least England. So, it actually was the the newspaper where like really super sensationalized coverage of Jack the Ripper killings. Yeah. Happened. And it was known for rampant xenophobia. Oh, fun. <laughs> yes, very fun. Uh, in short, it was a tabloid, journalistic candy of little merit. And it's somewhat, it's something that... <sighs> yeah, deep breath. I, yeah, I wish, I wish, if I could get one superpower, it would be able to read and speak what I'm trying to say. Yeah. That would be the best superpower. Oh, we ever. should do a full... Oh, they wouldn't have any banter. We should make a full episode where we type up our banter and the copy and just do like a, uh, a speak and spell. Do the full episode. Oh, my God. It'd be so bad. That would be terrible. It'd probably sound better than what we do. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so something referenced frequently was its coverage of spring Jack. Now... This is unsurprising, as Jack was on the cover of the tabloid no less than three times, three of which are above us. Oh, yeah. Uh, in the form of woodcut illustrations, which he is, as I mentioned before, bizarrely naked. I yeah. don't get it, because none of the spring Jack stories talk about him being naked. No. It might just be scarier if he's naked. Like, who knows? Yeah, I mean, it, that's probably fair. Yeah. Um. In Mike Dash's report on the tabloid, he notes that the first appearances of spring Jack in the paper depict him as a sheet-clad phantom. Oh, kid- nice. That's how I'm described frequently, too. It's pretty great. Yeah. Oh, God damn it. Yeah. Are you? No. Are you a Scooby-Doo ghost? Are you Old Man Jenkins? I am Old Man Jenkins. Oh, man. That actually reminds me. Of Leroy There's Jenkins? There's a book. Huh? No. No? Okay. Which World of Warcraft World of Warcraft Classic is back? So that's I know thing. I'm excited, but I'm not going to play it. That's fair. Yeah, I'd be I'd be seriously concerned if you started playing it. Yeah. Oh, you should be. I really all yeah. the next game I'm probably going to play. To be honest, is Pokemon when it comes out. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there's a demo in the Switch store right now for a game called Demon X Machina. Yeah. It's basically Armored Core. Ooh. Okay. So. I'd recommend giving it a shot and seeing how yeah. it goes, but um, I don't even remember what I was going to... I was going to look something up. Oh, because uh, we were talking about Old Man Jenkins. Mm-hmm. Man, that was a weird leap. Yeah. That was like a really quick leap to, uh-huh. to World of Warcraft and Demon X Machina from spring Jack of all Oh, things. yeah. Oh, no, so, we're good at jumping topics real good. Yeah, yeah. Um... So the thing I was going to recommend 
is there's a book called Meddling Kids. Yeah. It's a send up to the old Scooby Doo cartoon. Mm hmm. Uh, in which, okay, so it's heavily, I think it's heavily implied, if not outright a thing, mm -hmm. Velma and Daphne kind of are lesbians for each other. Uh, Shaggy had himself put into a, uh, insane asylum. Yeah. Uh, Scooby-Doo is just a family dog. <laughs> Uh -huh. And Fred, because of the events of a summer in which they like uncovered a Eldrick Carr, yeah, had ended up becoming a super like becoming like a superstar actor, yeah. And then because he couldn't deal with the the overwhelming pressure of reality, uh -huh. ended up killing himself. Oh God! And now Shaggy sees hallucinations of the version of Fred. What? That basically are constantly talking to him, and he's having conversations with okay. throughout the entirety of the the Holy book. Holy cow! It's a really good book. Yeah. Uh, and I highly recommend it mm -hmm. to people who, especially people who like this podcast, because it's like, well, I guess I should say if you enjoy, if you enjoy H.P. Lovecraft, whole oeuvre, that might yeah. be it. Uh, it's way, it, there's way less fear of, like, there's way less racism undertones in the yeah. book, though. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah, no, that guy was a character. Like, definitely. Yeah. Like, 100% yeah, definitely. Yeah, H.P. Like, Lovecraft, H.P. Lovecraft is an individual. Yeah. That's really all I can say about him. He's problematic deeply problematic he is that's why he was a good writer and that's not saying anything positive about him but i think no. i might have said something about this before where he takes his like his, his different like his fears uh, of like xenophobia and anything that's different about other people and he takes that and puts it into uh like a fiction about a monster so he's yeah. like describing his own problems through a different lens and i think that's why he he writes good yeah, because, well, it's because he's re recontextualizing his irrational fears. Yeah. So, it he's a deeply problematic character, but he's interesting in how he... I don't know if it's even how he's dealing with it, but how he... He's not... How he, like, recontextualized it. it was yeah. Weird. I don't know. Regardless, that's probably enough talking about H.P. Lovecraft's racism for one episode. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> which I don't think people talk about nearly enough. No, like nobody talks about that at yeah. all. And it's not it's, just it's, racism. It's basically anything that's not HP Lovecraft ism. Like he, yeah, he, he, was, he was, he was not great. He had a, not great. He had a legitimate distaste for the other. Yeah. Outside of himself. Yeah. A hundred percent. Yeah. R regardless. So, um, the sources used by Mike Dash, which, if you remember, Illustrated Police News, not a great source. Pretty bad, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, very sensationalized. Yellow journalism at its finest. Uh, but we're going to use the source that Mike Dash used in talking yeah. about Aldershot. Because I like Mike Dash. I think that he did some phenomenal research work. Yeah. Uh, and I would never have been able to do this episode if it weren't for him. Okay. Um, is generally more reliable in the form of Sheldrake and uh, Sheldrake's Aldershot in Sandhurst Military Gazette, yeah. which started coverage of the event in Aldwater March 17th, 1877. Someone or other appears to have made up his mind to play some rather questionable pranks with the sentries at this camp while on duty night, on night duty. About a week ago, it appears, but we do not vouch for the correctness of the story, a sentry was on duty in the North Camp. At about midnight, someone came towards him who refused to answer the usual challenge of, Who comes there? <laughs> <laughs> like, who comes there? Hail and well met. Oh, God. I would... Hail. Hail. Hail and well met. I used to be an adventurer like you. All right. Uh, and after dodging about the Hail. century box... God damn it. Oh, man. When you... Greetings, adventurer. Yeah. 
that was the one thing as a DM I never played around, played along with. No, because I do that all the time. Every NPC, hail and well met. I I I, I operate in my world, the world that I made in the context of hail and well met is a very unusual greeting. Yeah, and I <laughs> loved great. it because every time I could play like, what are you doing? And you know, on the one hand, like as a DM you should be more willing to go along with the thing. But it became a bit. Oh, yeah. This a hard and... avoidance is great. To the point where, like, if one NPC ever said that, you're like, wait a minute. What is happening here? This is significant now. Yeah. yeah. It, it, was, it was definitely a bit. Oh, yeah. Uh, it, and oh, I had so much fun with that. Because the thing is, your character could have literally stopped saying hail and well met at any point. Yeah, but they're stubborn. Yeah, and the thing is, it always it always negatively colored every single interaction uh-huh. you had with every single NPC from the beginning mm-hmm. because they're just kind of like, who the hell is this weirdo? Yeah. And your character definitely should have picked up on that after a while. Yeah. But your character never did, and I loved it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so no, my characters like me, they don't they have a hard time picking up on social cues. God, that was a uh, that was uh Din Viesel, right? Yeah, that was Din Viesel. That was Din Viesel. Din Viesel went out. <laughs> I love the way that Din Viesel went out, though. Oh yeah, that's uh, fantastic. It was, that was so good. Yeah. Well, it was self. It was self sacrifice to the point that other people in the party are like, "What?" Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and. I was like, yeah, I'm going with this. Because cause the whole setup for the whole thing was basically... I had given you guys too many magical items. Yeah. And I wanted to get rid of some of those magical items. Mm-hmm. And basically, if you put, had put like a handful of your magical items on the dais, it would have stopped everything. Yeah. Uh, but you interpreted it as, oh, I'm just going to sacrifice my character. Oh, yeah. Well, there's there were a few things going on. I wanted... Because that is the character I had right before Plundar. So I was at the point where I was like, I sort of want to do another character. And then at the same time, I was like, oh, I bet I can achieve... Mul-. Instead of just retiring Din Viesel, I can just have like this moment of self-sacrifice and also confuse everyone in the group. Um, yes. Which is explicitly what I play for is just to confuse people. So that's what I did. And it was pretty good. It was pretty good. It was a very fitting tribute to to that character. Oh yeah. Um which that can't that part of the campaign, that part of that adventure of the campaign. Yeah. I think to this day is still the fav- my favorite thing I've ever done. It it was so much fun. Like that that adventure was like so basically I made a version of Jurassic Park which was literally Jurassic Park because there were actual dinosaurs on the island. Oh, yeah. But those dinosaurs weren't the creatures that were being contained in Jurassic Park. <laughs> it was magical beasts being contained in, magic- yeah. <laughs> in Jurassic Park. And the dinosaurs just happened to be the natural wildlife. Yeah. No, it was great. I'm gonna start calling you Mr. Crichton. Oh, jeez. Um, anywho, that's, that's, that's enough D&D talk. So after just dodging about the century, I just really liked that campaign. It was a good campaign. Uh, I just got I I lost I lost the plot when we got into the the dreamland. Yeah, I really liked. So I know we went to a lot of spots, and so I want to say the thing I remember the most because I don't know why was like when we went into the one facility and like we had to figure out how to open like a secret door and all that stuff. Like the whole <laughs> area leading right up to the self sacrifice. I forget how many campaign like how many sessions it lasted but that was like a such a fun spot that whole like area there well there was the one time that i uh so i found a i found a trap online that was literally um it was an orb right yeah and that orb was something that anytime you acknowledged it it damaged you yeah all you had to do was ignore the orb but because it's an orb in the middle of a room in D&D that is doing attacks to you. It's unavoidable. Of course it's yeah. unavoidable. So you're going to pay attention to it. 
Mm-hmm. But if you literally just said, nah, I'm done with this, and just left, it would have been fine. There, I also want to say another thing that you didn't do it on purpose, but my uh, my goblin uh, rogue character that yes. you fucked me so hard on. <laughs> because <laughs> this character, all they did was like do costume changes and impersonate people on top of like their other stuff. So he was pretending to be a bar owner named Scrumpy, who I did a voice for that was very raspy and hurt my throat. And then Scrumpy, who the rest of the party didn't know was actually the the the, the rogue, got shifted to another plane with the rest of the party. And there were sessions where I was trapped doing the voice that hurt my throat. Didn't you like? Didn't you fall into Scrumpy's voice at a period, like a- after a certain point, and you're just like, oh no, oh yeah, yeah. Well, I just did it. Start doing it not on purpose. Yeah. <laughs> like, I was doing it for so long. It was like, why am I just talking like that now? I, I felt so bad because it was like the whole point of that was supposed to be to give me some time to plan the ending of the campaign. Uh-huh. <laughs> so I was just kind of like pulling from Dreamland stuff. Yeah. And then you just end up in there as like not even your full character. Yeah. Oh, I had like the other half of my gear was back at the inn. <laughs> so yeah. It's just like had not all my stuff. Nobody could know that I was this other character and I had to do this voice. Uh, it was fun. It though. was, it was very good. Like it got it ridiculous. It was good. Yeah. I kind of played fast and loose with the rules. So that's the, but, it says uh, right in the player's handbook. Like don't follow the rules. It's supposed to be just for fun. These are it just does. sort of here so you can look stuff up sometimes. Yeah. Um. So if, since we've, we basically turned this into a D&D podcast for uh-huh. a little bit there, I am going to get back to Spring Hill Jack dodging about the sentry box in a fantastic fa- fashion for some time. Good segue. Uh, That's a solid segue. Yeah. So <laughs> he made off with astonishing swiftness. Not, yeah. however, until the sentry had loaded his rifle and fired, oh. but without any effect. Springfield Jack, as he'd been termed in the camp, then paid a similar visit to the sentry on duty near the cemetery, yeah. who also fired, but alas, without hitting the object at which he aimed. So we're, we're dealing with uh, Star Wars uh, logic here, or Cobra yeah. Commando. So I'm beginning to think that... Uh, I'm beginning to think that... Uh, which McCall is Cobra Command? Uh-huh. Uh huh. The British military. Yeah. Um, what or who this individual? You mean who? Whom? Yeah, it should you, you actually, be whom. Yeah, I actually don't know if that's true or not, but eh. It feels whom feels right there. Yeah. But they then proceed to use who again, so you know whatever. Yeah. The individual who is thus amusing himself to be. We do not know, but such little bits of fun might be carried just too far, and his enjoyment of this kind had better be discontinued before one of the nocturnal planks leads to unpleasant results. Ooh. That is that is a death threat right there. Oh, yes. Uh, it should be noted that in all the flaps to date, this is the first instance of Jack being re- referred to as spring Jack outright. Um the creature would re- return to alert the sur- soldiers that he was there to confound British troops. Curiously, though, he didn't really appear on nights when the moonlight was abundant. Oh, uh, okay. The iteration of Jack slapped soldiers and gave some black eyes mm-hmm. and was capable of outrunning his would-be captors, who are military individuals. Yeah. Uh, Jack may have been caught when a suspicious individual was caught sneaking onto the base on April 28th with what appeared to be a Jack costume. At this point, reports disappear from the Gazette. However, police news uh, begins to report more appearances until the end of the summer. Okay. Once again, these appearances are seen nowhere else. Oh, uh, okay. His me- method of proceeding seems to be... Uh, his method of proceeding seems to be to approach the unobserved some post, then climb the sentry box and pass his hand which is arranged as to feel the cold and clammy as that of a corpse, which this is really weird. I I get that it's 1800 speech, but it should really just be, yeah, his, his hand is cold and clammy, which I don't know how anyone felt that, but whatever. Yeah. Uh, over the face of the Sentinel. Oh, there it is. <laughs> the, the sentries had lately been ordered to fire on the ghost and were loaded with ball, but this precaution had lately been given up. Jack pursued his old tactics on the 31st of August, 1877. 
He managed to reach unseen the powder magazines in the North Camp, here, having nearly frightened the sentry out of his wits by slapping his face with a death-like hand, oh, he God. disappeared, hopping and bounding into the mist. So, this report to me is basically a tabloid having a slow news week. Yeah. Uh, there's no evidence indicative of Jack continuing to operate in this camp. In fact, there's more evidence to indicate the military was embarrassed that a prankster was able to pull one over on their soldiers and ship the per- the prankster off with minimal fanfare and didn't report on it because they're not crazy and didn't yeah. want to look like, you know, they could be pranked. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> now, that being said, I think Jack sold papers. Mm-hmm. Much like Jack the Ripper would a few years later. Which I almost wonder if Jack the Ripper... And J- Spring Hill Jack, like their their etymology is the same, but I don't know. Yeah. Uh, so, the Illustrated Police News followed Jack to Newport. For some time past, says our contributor, the neighborhood has been disturbed each night by a man dressed in sheepskin or something of the kind with a long white tail to it. So, I, I by long white tail, I think they mean like the actual yeah. like, coat tail. Not, <clears throat> not lamb tail, because those aren't long to begin yeah. with. Yeah. Yeah. No, not at all. Um, the man who is playing this mischief has springs to his boots and can jump up to a height of 15 or 20 feet. Gee, that's, right. that's a vertical leap. Yeah, that's uh, something right there. Yeah, it really is. The other night, he jumped upon a college and got into a window on the roof and so frightened the ladies that one has not yet recovered from the shock. Some other people, I, I don't get it, people... People fell into shock real easy in the 1800s, apparently. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That seems like it's a thing, then. Yeah. Uh, or it's just a, a turn of phrase that doesn't translate anymore, because we have, like, a actual mil- we have an actual medical definition for what shock yeah. is now. So, uh, some other people were so much frightened by this object that every night a large mob of men, armed with sticks and stones... To break the bones. Yes, to break the bones of spring Jack... Assemble and attempt to catch him, but to no avail. The nuisance became so great that two men got guns out and chased him. Mm-hmm. The picture represents him jumping up the Newport Arch, a very old Roman building built in 45 AD. Yeah. As he was jumping, he was shot at, but so tough the hide that he wears, it did not penetrate it. And running over the housetops to the other side, he escaped, but soon appeared in another part of the town. He was again chased, and as he was running on the wall of the new barracks was shot at by the publician. Yeah. Publican. I'm assuming that's the public. Mm -hmm. Uh, But the shot did not appear to take any effect. So, um, once again, the description of Jack appearance changes and his jump ability has increased significantly. Yeah. Uh, In the the previous reports, it was somewhere around six feet. Mm -hmm. And now suddenly it's 15 15 to 20 20 feet. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's pretty high. Oh, yes, it is. Uh, A little bit. Interestingly, and I think that of all the things in this report, this is the most, like, like the thing that I've latched onto the most. Mm -hmm. Uh, The paper attempts to rationalize the bulletproofing of spring Jack as being the work of his outfit. However, at this point, gun rifling existed. (laughs) Yeah. Um, Also, it's sheepskin, right? So, yeah. Yeah. If he wasn't wearing a flak jacket, I don't think anything would happen. I don't think, like, a bullet would be stopped. No. No, that dude would be perforated. mm mm-hmm. uh, So, at this point, it might be a good idea to point out that when telling lies or fabrications, people get really focused on the details. Like, really focused. And try to explain things in a rational way. So, people focus in on the rational explanation and ignore the totally batshit crazy stuff that's happening. Uh huh. Just, just, just a thing that I've observed in pe- in humankind. Yeah. Um. So at this point in his history, Springheel Jack sightings evolve into rumor mill, an outright fabrication, which is my personal belief. Mm-hmm. Um. One story even places Jack in run- London during the Ripper murders in the eighteen 18- in eighteen eighty eight, terrorizing the populace from the steeples. Although the only source for this was published in nineteen seventy six. Yeah. So, who knows? 
Uh, his last canonical sighting was in September 1904, in which Jack left around for a full 10 minutes before disappearing in Liverpool, England, which is kind of similar to uh, the Scarecrow of Chiang Lai, where it just yeah. is like happening for a while and no one really does anything. Incidentally, there is a code of this final sighting in the form of an account by one Miss Pierpoint, who had lived in the area at the time of the incident. <clears throat> A local man, slightly off balance mentally, he had a form of religious mania and would climb onto the rooftops of houses crying out, my wife is the devil. Oh, God. <laughs> uh, they usually fetched police or a fire engine la- ladder to get him down. As the police closed in on him, he would leap from one house roof to the next. That's what gave rise to the spring Jack rumors. So... The last sighting of spring Jack, canonical sighting, was literally just some crazy dude screaming about how his wife was a was a devil. Yeah. <laughs> Basically, it was a guy jumping rooftop to rooftop being like, I hate my wife. Yeah. Um So that's that's kind of the inauspicious end uh to the Victorian era's resident boogeyman. Mm-hmm. Now the Cryptid Wiki delivers. Nice. There's still four more sightings of spring Jack. Oh, hell yeah. East, according to the Cryptid's Wiki. Now, the following sightings are copied verbatim from the Wiki as of September 2nd, 2019. And allow me to read them for you. In the 1970s, the inhabitants of Addercliffe in Sheffield complained about a red-eye figure who punched a woman. Oh, geez. Okay. He, he was rumored to jump between rooftops and walk down the sides of walls. So Spider-Man, uh-huh. evil Spider-Man. Or what was it in the, the Spider-Man movie I haven't seen? Night Monkey? What, Night Monkey? Yeah, I guess it's called Night Monkey or something like that. What? I don't know. Yeah, I haven't seen the new Spider-Man yet. I haven't either. All right, I guess Night Monkey is a thing. Yeah. Um. In South Hest... Hes- Okay, I'm definitely going to pronounce this wrong, but English names are bullshit. In South Herefordshire, a salesman named Marshall had encountered in 1986. 1986 is the correct date. I've been in the 1800s so long that it kind of kept me. I carried me. Uh, A man who took gigantic. Gigantic? Gigantic. Yes, yes. Uh, Such a difficult word. Uh, Leaps and slapped him on the road. That's it. Just a dude took a gigantic leap and slapped him. Yeah. The next one's my favorite. Uh, in West Surrey, a man, many school-going children reported seeing a man who was all black with red eyes who could run as fast as a car. And in parentheses, 435 <laughs> kilometers oh, wow. per hour. What kind of car is that? That's 270 miles per hour, just for reference. Yeah. Um... In February of 2012, Scott Martin and his family were traveling in a taxi when they saw a dark figure run across the street and climb a roadside bank in seconds near Nescott College in Endwell Bypass. So, I did a little bit of research, and I have a few notes. Okay. Uh, I could find reference to the first two from the form of secondary sources, but they're fairly standard Jack stories with little supporting evidence. Um... That's it. They're they're not really interesting stories to me, yeah. and they have no proof that anything happened. So who cares? Uh, the third is pure insanity. <laughs> There's a lack of a date, which makes it hard to track, and more importantly, the creature, as I said before, would be running about 270 miles per hour. Yeah. For those of you who don't adore cheetahs, this is about four times faster than the speediest boys and girls on Earth. Oh God. Uh they can only do it for short bursts due to the just sheer energy expenditure. Um, in fact, this speed would outp- outpace the Peregrine Falcon in its dive, which is about oh. 242 miles per hour. So if something is running at 242 miles per hour, that's a nightmare. Y- yeah. No. 100%. And it would, it would, it would destroy the earth. I feel like. Yeah. Uh, this has been facts about John's favorite animals, which happen to be two of the season one maximal alt modes. Yeah. 
Uh, I wonder why they're my favorite animals. Oh, this morning I saw King Cheetah on Reddit. Oh, and did I'm you? so happy. It's so beautiful. Nice. It's like uh it's got like a mane. Mm-hmm. It's crazy. I, I I like I like I like cheetahs. I like che- the white you cheetah. Don't see you've liked cheetahs for a very long time. I've liked cheetahs yeah. since I've liked cheetahs since cheat. So I actually remember the moment that the cheetah became my favorite animal. Mm-hmm. It was my fifth birthday. I want to say that sounds about right. Uh, I had gotten a bunch of the first wave of Beast Wars toys. Yeah. Um, and I'd gotten wave one Cheetor, which talks about him being the fastest maximal. Yeah. And that was why cheetahs are my favorite character, uh, oh. my favorite animal, literally because of the tech spec for Cheetor. Uh-huh. That's it. That uh-huh. was all it took for it to become my favorite animal. Mm-hmm. So the more you know. The more you um, know. Yeah. Getting back to the four sightings, um, only the Scott Martin incident has any meat to it. And by uh-huh. any meat, I mean it's the only case in which the witness was coded. And even then, it's literally condensable to the sentence blurb from before. Mm-hmm. Interestingly, all four of these sightings uh, are remarkably in the spirit of Jack in that they're random phenomena attributed to a generically specific boogeyman. So, what do I think Jack is? What do you think Jack is? Uh, before we leave Jack behind, I want to take a minute to talk about how he was reintroduced in the modern cultural zeitgeist. Uh-huh. Uh, as I mentioned in passing in episode one, spring Jack was uncovered by ufologist John Viner in the 1960s when attempting to find evidence of aliens from before the 1940s. To, jo- to Viner, Jack was practically a malicious version of E.T., and his version of the story from episode one was uh-huh. likely to punched up to curry favor with his concept of a stranded alien looking for its way home. Uh, I was looking into it. Yeah. That's all the information I could find on Jack John Viner. I thought oh. there was more. Yeah. I was wrong. I was sorely mistaken. Jeez. He literally was just looking for an excuse to say, uh, see, aliens existed before the 1940s. Yeah. That's Holy it. Um, and as a result, Jack is back in the cultural zeitgeist. Yeah. He probably would have, honestly, he would have probably just become kind of like a cultural footnote. Uh-huh. Uh, kind of like the dancing plague of France or something along those lines. Yes. Um, personally... My hypothesis is that Jack is a form of supernatural pareidolia. Okay. Um, I buy it. Because to me, I don't think spring Jack overall is mass hysteria. I think there were incidents of mass hysteria. Mm-hmm. But what I really think it is, is people are trying to find an explanation for something that they don't understand. Yeah. So they're assigning it to this supernatural, literal boogeyman. Like, that's the idea of a boogeyman. It's like a general pareidolia where you're saying, I see a pattern. Yeah. And it's this supernatural thing I know about. And that's it. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, that's really all I got on Spring Hill Jack. Okay. It's a weird, it's a weird character from history. Um, I definitely left a lot of stones unturned. Okay. I'm not going to lie. Could always uh, revisit. I could always revisit. I'm probably not going to revisit it for any, like anytime soon because to me, this is the core meat and potatoes of the spring Hill Jack. Yeah. There might be a few like side alleys and maybe I'll do a Patreon episode. If I find anything interesting, like mm-hmm. in my other research. Yeah. Um, but if you really like this story, definitely read Mike Dash's article that I've linked. Okay. Um, I'm going to say that because Mike Dash is literally the authority on spring Jack. Oh, geez. All right. Yeah. There's no one who's done as much research as this dude. Like, to the point that he's the person that they brought on a monster talk mm-hmm. about spring Jack. Jack. Um, but, yeah. Uh, definitely, if you if you read it uh, and you like it, pass love on to, to Mike Dash. Because yeah. I didn't – most of this is me synthesizing stuff that, that – uh, from that article in a way that's like readable and yeah. listenable. So 
It's a really good article. Um, I don't have anything else to say for this episode, though. Okay. So, uh, as always, if you want to get in contact with us, uh, our website is CryptopediaCast.com. Our mm. Instagram is at CryptopediaCast. Twitter, also at CryptopediaCast. If you want to email us, CryptopediaCast at gmail.com or us at CryptopediaCast.com. We have a Patreon, which the episode copy for this episode will be placed on. Yeah. Um, and if you're a Jackalope level or a high, well, there's no higher than Jackalope. Uh, if you're a Jackalope supporter, uh, you do get read out on the episodes. And I think I read it last time, Brandon. So mm-hmm. you want to give it a read? Oh, I suppose I can. So the Jackalopes are Clay Sinclair and Marty Von Party. Oh, geez. Alexa just started. Alexa, stop. Alexa, stop. Stop. (laughs) Alexa. (laughs) Alexa, stop. Stop. What is she talking about even? She's still talking. That's a real, like, I can hear it. It's going to be picked up in the audio. And I will not remind you again. Thanks. Now back to playing Relax My Cat. What? What? She started playing a song called Relax My Cat. I don't... I'm gonna... I don't... I'm gonna... Hold up. Alexa, stop! (laughs) Brandon has run away from the keyboard. Uh... That was so weird, and I think I know what it was. Maybe? So I have a smart TV in the bedroom... And when I ran past to yell at Alexa, my cat was laying on top of the remote, which also has an Alexa button. So I think my cat maybe went on the Alexa button, and then she overheard something I was saying. Oh, my God. That's amazing. Uh, Yeah. Uh, Anywho. God damn it. Uh, If you like the show, rate, review, subscribe, share it with your friends, all that good stuff. If you have any monster requests or stories, uh, send them in. But if you got sources, that's better. Oh, yes. You can find me on Instagram at donkey underscore hands. My website is boyerb.com. My email is brandon at cryptopediacast.com. And my Twitter is at crypto brandon. Uh, if you want to follow me, I'm at mu2057 on Instagram. My Twitter is at JF Dunham. My website, johndunhamgames.com. And my email is john at cryptopediacast.com. Our art was done by Tom Hill. You could find him on Instagram at Thomas Michael Hill. His website is greatergloryco.com and his email is tommikehill at gmail.com. As always, I'm John. I'm Brandon. And things are going to get weird. Not that they haven't already. No, they have. That's so weird with the ele- with the, the my evil robot in the room. Yeah. Yeah. Don't call her an evil robot. She's hearing you. She knows I hate her. That's fair. <laughs> Except it's not at all. Why would you let something into your house that you hate? <laughs>